Welcome to the Bath, Fizz, and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French Smith, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Chunka Dust Ice Cream Cone Mold. So, the Chunka Dust Ice Cream Cone Mold. You bought it, you're looking at it, you're like, how do I use this thing? It's, it doesn't make sense to me. Help, help, help. I'm, <laughs> calm down, I'm here, okay? One of the things about this mold that I absolutely love, but might be a little bit baffling to you if you've never seen a mold like this before, is that it is bottomless. Um, it doesn't have a bottom or a top. <laughs> I mean, it does, it does have a bottom and a top, but it has like a hole that goes all the way through. And if you've never seen a mold like that before, it may be really confusing to you how this is gonna work. And let me just tell you, right off the bat, it's going to work phenomenally. It's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be amazing. This is actually one of several molds that Chunka Dust has that are bottomless like this. And the first one that I used, I want to say, was their snow globe slash um, crystal ball mold that they have. And of course, when I first saw it, I was a little bit intimidated. I didn't quite know how it would work. It, it, it just seemed like maybe this isn't gonna work. And so I gave it a shot and let me tell you, it was amazing. I absolutely adore these molds now and any chance I get to use a mold that is bottomless like this, I will always jump at the chance of that. And there's not a lot of other makers that I've seen that are doing this. Honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know. Chunk of Dust might be the only ones. So I'm just saying, girl, she got, she got something going on with that, okay? Because it's very unique, very unique construction to this mold, very clever design because it handles one of the biggest issues that we as bath bomb makers have when it comes to unmolding bath bombs and that is the issue of the saturn ring so if you don't know what a saturn ring is let me just fill you in a saturn ring is when you see like a round bath bomb like let's talk about the classic round lush bath bombs right and it has that big fat ring that goes around the edge i absolutely adore a fat Saturn ring and it's just like it makes me feel so special okay I don't know there's something about a nice healthy Saturn ring that I really like when I first started making bath bombs I wanted to never have a Saturn ring and I think a lot of people when they first start making they're like how do I get rid of the Saturn ring let me tell you there's just something really nice about a super crisp Saturn ring and it's great with a round bath bomb. It's great with a round bath bomb. When you have a shaped bath bomb, like let's say this ice cream cone mold or mm, just other shapes that you need to stand have stand up and you have this Saturn ring that's going around the bath bomb, then that becomes a problem because it's basically a weak point where the mold is got to stand up on kind of a thinner part. So you want it to be standing on the base or the strongest part of the bath bomb. And now you have it standing on kind of a thin part or a compromised part, you know, not the strongest part. So what is really neat about this design is that it just eliminates that as an issue altogether. And I think it's super clever and I can't wait to show you this. I actually have a couple other designs um, in my lineup to show you from Junk of Dust because I really just like the way that they approach bath bombs. If you've ordered from them before, you might know, you might like have noticed, okay, they don't have a ton of, as, as much selection, right, as some of the other makers. Um, but I would argue that the molds that they do have are just, they're so good. Like, it's a, I don't even know how else to describe it. It is just a completely different approach to bath bomb molds and it's something I really appreciate. It's actually something I look for when I'm looking for mold makers. So let's get into this mold since I'm just, just talking. And don't worry, I'll show you more. So if you're like, blah, 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 you talk too much. I'm sorry, I do talk too much and I know I do and I'm sorry, but whatever. Um, you can just mute me. <laughs> you want to. I'm gonna do this three more times. You have four times total that you can see this, so you're gonna be okay. 
So basically I filled the mold up with mix. I made a little divot in the middle where I added my embeds and I gently packed it. I don't prefer to pack my bath bomb super tight or pack it uh, when it's being filled, like to push the mold in, the mold, the mix in. Some people do, it's, I, I don't prefer to do that. I think that they have the best chance of floating if you, you use a light, fluffy mix. But if you feel the need to pack it in super hard, I guess you can, it's just not necessary. So, I'm just saying, like if you're having to expend a whole bunch of energy, like pressing it and squeezing it and all this stuff, like maybe rethink it. I don't think it, it shouldn't be hard. It should be fun and easy. So, I'm just saying like, you know. Let it be like life, you know, where if, you should, if you're having fun, then you're doing it right. Okay, so I'm tearing the mold to zero it out, and I'm using the, um, the negative weight to know how much mix I have in there, and that's because this, I filled up to 4.75 ounces. And then, like I said, I made the little divot, and I added some embeds, and I didn't press the mix really down into that concave area where the lip of the cone is. You could do that, I guess, if you have issues with it being underfilled in that section. I just don't find that I need to. I do take my finger and press gently on the concave on the top, though, and then add extra mix to it just to kind of pack that area in. And then I flatten out the, <laughs> what is that called? The stem of the cone, <laughs> like the handle part of the cone. I don't know what that part's called. I flattened it out a little bit and I'm just squeezing it closed I'm gonna give it a tap right here just to knock the excess dust off. Just kind of helps me make a little bit less of a mess. I'm still gonna make a mess, don't worry. Give it a little flippy dip and press it. You know, I'm not, like not sitting there pressing it really hard. I'm not, it's like I said, I'm not expending a ton of energy to press it. I'm just gently pressing it together. I'm, you know, giving it one healthy like table press, right? Um, instead of just hand squeezing, it does have one table press, but I'm not sitting there and just using all my energy to it. The mix is not gonna fall off the top or the bottom. So like I showed you, you can hold it upside down. It's not gonna fall off the top or the bottom because it's compressed and it's packed in there. And I give it a light tap on either side. It's Notice that it's faced down, so it's faced upside down. I'm not trying to stand it up on that thin part of the cone. I'm standing it on the fat part of the cone, if that makes sense. So one more time, let's lightly fill it like so with a light fluffy mix. I'm gonna make a little divot in there so I can hide my embeds uh, without them showing. <laughs> I think there's one of them um, when I hold it up and like show you how, how I did. <laughs> I think there is one of them that I put the embeds a little bit too close to the edge. It's not really that big a deal, honestly, in my opinion, but you know, I, I just like that you can put embeds in here. Okay, taking that finger and pressing it down right there on that lip to make sure that it's packed a little bit more and then clearing off some of that area in the handle. Let's call that the handle, okay? Let's go, or we could call it the leg, what do we think? I think it's just, that feels too personal. Let's say the handle, okay? So we're clearing off that area on the handle and then um, just a gentle hand squeeze to make sure that uh, it's kind of balanced all the way around. What I'm looking for when I hand squeeze it is I'm double checking that, um, it, so say I didn't pack the top very well and I overfilled the stem. <laughs> Does I just pull out a new word for this thing? God dang it, sorry. Handle, leg, stem, whatever that base part, bottom part is. Um, say I overpacked it and then my mold would be kind of like lopsided as I hand squeeze it and I could tell it's fine if that happens but I'm just double checking that it's kind of it feels balanced you know that my Saturn ring is going to be fairly even all the way around and then I'm going to give it just a couple taps on each side I don't even know if that's fully necessary but it's kind of like habit and then just pull it away it's like magic yes darling it's like magic and you still get the texture of that waffle cone shape. Uh, very cool. I guess it's a sugar cone, it's not a waffle cone. Waffle cones have the pointed bottoms, but whatever. It's an ice cream cone, you can put ice cream in it. Not real ice cream, bubble, <laughs> bubble ice cream. Don't put real ice cream in it, dear God. And let's do one more 
really, let's pay attention now so that we have it. Okay, I'm gonna focus this time so we know. Okay, divot. Got it. Check. Got the divot. And then I uh, built the walls up a little bit. I think because I noticed that that one did have mm, some embeds showing through my bad. And the embeds, I'm fit, I'm able to fit like seven embeds into this thing. It's so awesome. The cool thing is when you're using embed, like that many embeds is you kind of, you get a little bit more, you get more bath bombs out of it, right? Cause you're using less mix overall. Okay, so lightly filling it, one press. Now it looks even, but there is more compact on the top. And then overfilling the top again to make sure that I have extra mix up there flattening that area out so that now when um okay just adding a little like extra mix i guess to make sure that it's weighing what i want it to weigh and then now i'm going to hand press it and you do notice um sometimes i get i don't know i get a little bit excited i get a little bit over i overdo it a little bit and i fill it too full and you can see the tippity tip top of the edge or whatever where it's not quite full so I just pull the Saturn ring up a little bit just to make sure that I compact that area too and if that's happening that just means fill it just a slight bit less it just means you're overzealous like me and I'm gonna take the shell away from the mold I did a couple times where sometimes I tapped the the mold while it was in the shell and then sometimes I tapped it when it was out I didn't find a huge difference this is not a picking mold this is a very forgiving mold so if you're nervous about this let me tell you this is probably one of the easiest molds you're gonna play with and it's way more impressive in my opinion than a donut but it's almost as easy so if you really want to impress people I'm just saying bounce for this mold okay it might make you very very happy later on down the line I am so sorry I apologize for that um, accent. I don't know what it was supposed to be, and I, I don't know what to tell you, okay? The really cool thing about Chunk of Dust is they are some of the first to hop on the mini bath bomb mold train. And I have a current obsession slash addiction to mini bath bomb molds and I know that you're sitting there if you make mass produce bath bombs you're sitting there and you're like rolling your eyes like Robin why are you advocating for these stupid mini molds you <laughs> like they take as much time to mold as a regular bath bomb <laughs> they are like an eighth of the size why are you advocating for these okay let me just say number one because they're freaking cute. What are you talking about? Why wouldn't you want this? It's so freaking adorable. So shut your mouth, shut your mouth and just appreciate how freaking cute it is to have that be a bath bomb. Just stop, just stop. It's cute, you can't argue with me. I don't wanna hear it, it's cute. It's tiny, it's cute. We're, we're doing it. Okay. B, number B, the other reason I'm advocating for these and I've become obsessed with them and I've been like asking every mold maker like, what's up girl, you got any minis over there? <laughs> the reason that that has been going on with me, that's like my current thing, is it's a great way to use up extra mix. So I have all this, I mean, I'm not going to say like, I have all this, quote unquote. I have all this mix left over and what what am I going to do with it? Am I going to toss it out? Normally, yes, probably. But uh, ingredients are expensive and citric acid is, she's really expensive these days. So why waste it? It's super cute. You can either use these, ex, you know, these little extras and um, if it were me, what I used to be back in, do back in the day when I was selling stuff is I would just throw in like little extras every time I would send stuff to a customer. So if I had a customer who bought bath bombs and body butters and she didn't buy soaps, I would throw in a sample of soap. If they bought soaps and sugar scrubs, I would throw in a sample of a bath bomb. So this is like a cute way to have little samples that you can throw in extra to kind of get your customers 
into either new products or into new fragrances that they may not think that they like. Or you could just literally make minis on purpose and do like a whole um, stand up pouch kind of thing of one type of mini bath bomb. You can use them to top other bath bombs. So if you have a waffle, ba a waffle, yeah, a waffle or a donut or a cupcake, any of those other shapes, and you have bubble frosting, and then you want to top it, like instead of topping it with a toy, which costs you money because you have to go buy those toys, now you're using your waste at, because this would have been, that extra in that bowl would have basically been waste. And so instead, I'm using that, and now I have little extras that I can add to, oh, I don't know, anything, anything I want to do. They're just cute. They're adorable. And I apologize that this was uncolored, but this is why I use them for this project right here, which is part of our Patreon this month. And um, so I just wanted to thank my Patreon uh, supporters. So thank you guys. You're awesome. You rock. Your name to scroll across the screen. And um, yeah, so we topped this with some Wonder Bar and um, can take a bubble bath with a Wonder Bar or I can throw those uh, bath bombs in the bathtub and use them. I can use them together. I can use them separate. I can use it however I want. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you're interested in learning more about bath bombs, you should come visit us at Bath Fizz and Foam Bath Bomb and Bubble Bar Support Group on Facebook. We are a community of friendly, nice, kind, helpful makers, and we would love to see you there. You could also come visit us at bathfizzandfoam.com where we have classes, boot camps, blogs, color studies. We have free stuff. We have paid for stuff. We have all kinds of stuff for you. We have free uh, basic bath bomb recipe that you can check out if you're interested in that. And then we have really good paid for recipes if you are looking for that. And of course, Patreon. You can come see us at Patreon where we're doing stuff. <laughs> it's exciting. There's a lot going on in Patreon. Like, I think we've been doing it for three months. We're in our fourth month right now. And there's already 40 something videos up for you guys to see anywhere from five minutes to an hour long. I mean, there's all just, just all kinds of content in there for you guys right now. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can come on over to Patreon. I will leave links in the description for where you can get this mold, where you can come find us on social media and all the other good things. And you know what? I just really appreciate you. I just want to say you right there sitting in your little chair with your little, your little blankie around you or whatever, whatever you're doing, snuggled up. I just, I appreciate you. Thank you. And happy making. Boop.